Hello, hi, sweetheart. It's wonderful to hear your voice again. I have to admit it was quite a challenge finding a new phone number for either of you. So how are things going on your end? Linda asked softly, attempting to conceal her excitement while masking the fear and sadness she truly felt. Stacy hesitated momentarily before opting for caution. New phone, who's this? Stacy interjected. Stacy, for goodness sake, it's me, your mom. I apologize for not calling sooner, but I hoped you'd recognize your mother's voice after all these years. Linda replied, her tone tinged with frustration. Stacy smiled faintly. She immediately recognized her mother's voice, but chose to proceed with extreme caution given the circumstances. Her carefulness also allowed her to address her absent mother's emotional absence without appearing rude. Oh, hi, mom, she finally responded. You caught me off guard, and I was just being cautious. I don't want to fall prey to some telephone stalker. Stacy paused again contemplating before objecting to her mother's claim of loving and raising her for over 17 years. She maintained her composure, but wasn't willing to forego expressing polite disagreement. Mom, I don't believe the past three years qualify as your care or affection. I was almost 14 when you left, and this call marks the first contact from you in three years. I'm already 17, and I've been without your maternal love for a long time. Linda sighed heavily. I'm truly sorry, Stacy. Back then, Everything was incredibly challenging, and I felt I had no choice but to leave. But let's not dwell on that. I genuinely called to check on you and possibly speak with your siblings if they're around. Now that things have settled, I intend to be more present for you. I hope we can reconnect, sweetheart, and you can enjoy the benefits of having a wealthy mother. With Frank and I married, there's much I can do for all my children, you, Rachel, and Josh. Our life now is far better than it was with your father. Don't misunderstand, darling. Your dad is a good man, but he couldn't provide the luxuries Frank does now. He pampers me daily, and I adore it. Linda's voice brimmed with enthusiasm. Now I want to show you kids what real life is about, the way it's meant to be. And I'll also make up for those challenging years when we struggled due to your father's modest income. Hopefully, this will alleviate the guilt of leaving you abruptly. By this point, Stacy could barely contain her anger, simmering with resentment. She deeply loved her father, Ed Mercer and admired him for shouldering the responsibilities of single parenthood and enduring the heartache. When Linda departed, Ed had to step up as a single parent, raising two daughters, one grappling with teenage issues, the other just 10, alongside a wild 20-year-old son. Stacy also took immense pride in her father's transformation of their lives following her mother's departure. Prior to leaving, Linda emptied all the bank accounts, plunging the family into a financial crisis worse than Stacy could recall. At 14, young Stacy assumed the role of a homemaker, striving to assist her family's survival. United, the father and children endured a challenging period lasting over eight months. Then, life became more manageable as her father enacted significant changes, and now, it's entirely wonderful. It would have been quite easy for Stacy to simply blame the main source of their suffering, her mother. In her 14th year, Stacy's well-known fiery temper lay in wait, ready to pounce. Suddenly, Stacy experienced a wave of utter calmness, comprehending how to conduct herself and what she needed to do in a conversation with her mother. And it was marvelous. If she had confronted Linda at that moment, her mother would undoubtedly have hung up, and Stacy might never have reconnected with her. It wouldn't have benefited anyone, and Stacy truly desired to maintain a relationship with her mother, despite her numerous mistakes. Embracing the feeling of calmness, Stacy decided how to proceed. She would have voiced her perspective highlighting her mother's errors, yet simultaneously preserving the opportunity for the continuation of the relationship between the children and their mother. Yes, it was the correct approach. The young woman grinned broadly and suggested to Stacy that she might have just learned a significant life lesson. She excitedly told her mother about her stunning appearance and promised to send a picture using her phone's camera, asking her not to hang up. Stacy positioned herself in front of the mirror on her bedroom closet door, Sunlight streaming through the window as it was around four o'clock in the mid-June evening. She smiled brightly into the mirror, showcasing her wheat gold hair styled in an elegant updo and her full-length lavender evening dress, which elegantly hugged her feminine figure. The floor-length dress was complemented by long white gloves ending just above her elbows, symbolizing Stacy's transformation from an awkward girl into a mature young lady. She took a couple of pictures, selected the best one, and promptly sent the selfie to her mother's cell phone. Impatiently, she asked if her mother received the photo and urged her to share her thoughts. 
A long pause followed, during which Linda reflected on the impact of the past three years on her blossoming daughter. Linda expressed her amazement at Stacy's beauty, struggling to find the right words as she fought back tears and a lump in her throat. She then expressed how much she missed Stacy and acknowledged her daughter's immense growth, questioning her own actions. Despite Linda's confused murmuring, Stacy proceeded. She mentioned how stunning Rachel would be and went to her younger sister's room, where she found Rachel putting the final touches on her long, thick, honey-brown hair. With an elegant updo framing her face, Rachel's hair cascaded down in gentle curls. Her large blue-gray eyes and soft features captivated many. Rachel's face was strikingly beautiful, with her slightly upturned nose and dimpled smile adding to her charm. Like Stacy, Rachel was dressed in an evening gown, exuding delicate elegance, albeit in a more understated manner compared to her older sister's attire. Hey, Rach, come on, pose for a photo. Mom's on the line and I'll send her your picture, Stacy said, circling around her sister to find the perfect angle to capture Rachel. Assisting her was a woman around 35, also donned in an evening gown designed to make a lasting impression. This woman exuded a regal beauty that turned heads wherever she went. She noticed the smartphone aimed at her and Rachel and started to step out of the frame, but Stacy intervened, gesturing for her to stay put. No, Janice, stay right there. I want you in the photo too, Stacy insisted. Rachel, still a bit surprised, eventually rolled her eyes and, cupping her hands around her mouth like a megaphone, shouted towards the phone, Hello, ma'am. Can't chat now, but let's catch up later. Moving around the room, Stacy snapped several shots of Rachel and Janice before signaling they were done. All set, ladies. I'll pick the best one and send it off. After a pause, Stacy held the phone to her ear and exclaimed, I bet you wouldn't recognize Rachel now. I mean, Mom, Rach even has curves. Rachel blushed and retorted, Stacy, you're such a dork. Be quiet. But a shy smile crept onto her face as the other women giggled at her playful embarrassment, prompting Stacy to refocus on the phone. So what do you think, Mom? Linda struggled to find the words, clearly amazed. My goodness, I'm speechless, honey. You both look stunning. You've grown so much and are so beautiful. I'm incredibly proud of both you and Rachel. I wish I could be there beside you right now. Linda kept pulling the phone away from her ear to look at the photos of her daughters, whom she missed dearly. Her maternal heart ached with longing and regret. She hastily wiped her teary eyes, focusing on the details of the pictures. Listen, Stacy, why are you both dressed up like that? You're not both going to prom, are you? She asked, perplexed. Stacy had successfully piqued her mom's interest and was now poised to flaunt it. No, mom, it's even better than prom. Remember that annual soiree you were always envious of but never got invited to? That grandiose summer evening gala hosted by Sedgwick and McTaggart? Linda immediately recalled, Yes, of course I do. That ball was always the social event of the year. Gosh, I'd give anything to attend that reception. Only the most influential and glamorous people in the entire state get invited. Linda's voice carried a wistful tone. I've always longed for the chance to don a beautiful evening gown and mingle with the social elite. It would be a dream come true. Linda sighed sentimentally before snapping back to reality. Oh my goodness. Did you and Rachel land jobs as hostesses or waitresses at that party? Wow, this is incredible. I'm so proud of both of you. Just imagine, my daughters will be there at the reception mingling with all those high society folks. Linda exclaimed, marveling at the picture that unfolded before her. No, no, Mom. Rachel and I aren't working as staff. We're invited guests. Stacy shared with her mother the secret they had with Rachel, brimming with pride and excitement. And what's more, we'll be seated at the main table because Dad is the guest of honor at the event. It's a surprise for him, but the organizers will give him special recognition. Isn't that super cool? I'll even be one of those taking part in the ceremony. Oh, my mom, I'm just... Oh... Nervous, but at the same time incredibly excited. Linda was utterly taken aback. What? You must be joking, right? Stacy, honey, you've got to be joking. Why would a humble cost control clerk be invited to such an esteemed event? And as the guest of honor, no less? Huffing. That's just not something that happens in real life. Okay, come on, honey, admit it. You're just pulling my leg, right? Well, yes, of course, mom. The eldest daughter chuckled. Of course. Rachel and I dress to the nines every day just to await your call and deliberately tease you. Let's be realistic, Mom. A lot has changed since you left us. We were in immense pain. No, we were all utterly devastated. But Dad managed to bring us all together, even Josh, and somehow built a new life for us without you. 
Perhaps I should catch you up on what's happened since you left. Hmm? We need to do this quickly because the limo with Fona and Josh should be back. She glanced at her watch. In about 15 minutes, and then we'll all need to leave. Stacy took a deep breath to quell her anger before recounting their life after. Mom, Dad was practically shattered when he found out about you and some old guy in bed together. You disappeared right after he confronted you about it. Honestly, I think you were planning to leave anyway. You just had to move up the date a bit. At this juncture, Linda interrupted her daughter's story, whispering, Sorry, Stacy. I didn't realize you knew about what went down between your dad and me. But yeah, after he found out, I felt I had to split. What was the use of sticking around? He even had photos of us. Frank and I decided to ditch the city and shack up in his Manhattan apartment, and we've been there since. Stacy, I'm sorry your dad decided to spill the beans to you. If you want to know, I think it was pretty messed up to drag you kids into this mess. Mom. Unable to hold back, the girl yelled, stomping her foot in frustration. This is, well, total crap. Stacy then tried to rein in her temper and the overwhelming emotions. She took a couple of deep breaths and then continued speaking clearly. Dad didn't spill anything to us. This. I told him about this. Who do you think took those photos, huh? Yeah, that's right, Mom. That day, Rachel and I came home and everything was quiet except for some weird noises from your room. I told Rachel to wait downstairs while I quietly went up to see what was up. When I saw you snapping pictures while lying on the bed, you quickly sent them to Dad. Then Rachel and I left to hang out with friends. Later, when we got back that evening, you were holed up in your room, crying. The next morning, you were gone. So the last image I have of my caring mother is her under some gross old man in Dad's room. Seriously, Mom, tell me I didn't need therapy to erase those ugly images from my mind. Thank goodness you two at least covered yourselves. Otherwise, I'd probably still be in therapy. I can't believe you're the one who betrayed me. Stacy, how could you do this? Linda exclaimed, a mix of frustration and indignation in her voice. I don't think now's the time or place to trade barbs about betrayal, Mom. That'd be quite an uneven match, don't you think? I could unleash my fire hose against your water pistol at any moment, if you catch my drift. And let's not forget what Rach and Josh might have to say about you, too. So, do you want to recap the past three years, or what? While talking to her mom on the phone, Stacy was inwardly surprised at how composed and rational she was handling the situation. She realized she had really grown and matured in the past few years. At that moment, Linda realized that to salvage any semblance of a relationship with her children in the future, she'd have to confront the harsh reality of responsibility for her actions and their repercussions. It won't be an easy feat. A few gifts and occasional meetings won't magically mend things. Something deeper is required. Her children must come to terms with the inevitable and adjust to life without her. Linda truly desired to understand how they were coping, but to do so, she must hear their feelings regarding her decisions and life choices. Did they all resent her? There's no escaping reality now. If she retreats, she'll likely lose them, possibly forever. However, if she intends to rebuild the relationship, she must acknowledge their emotions and allow their intense feelings to wash over her. Is she prepared for this? Was it all worth the pain she knew would inevitably follow? Linda gathered her resolve. Her voice softened with regret over the phone. Yes, Stacy, you're absolutely right. I suppose someday we'll have to sit down and thoroughly discuss all these matters. But for now, we must focus on restoring some semblance of communication. I reached out to reconnect with you, my children. And that's a good first step. Don't you think? Now let me hear about how your lives have unfolded. After Linda's departure, Stacy couldn't wait to update her mother on the family's journey since her absence. She began excitedly recounting, Mom, you won't believe what's happened. It's like something out of a novel or even a fairy tale. Anyway, after you left, Dad went through a rough patch for a few months. It was tough. Many times when Rachel and I returned from school, I'd have her wait outside while I checked inside, fearing I might find Dad. You know. Every phone call made me jump fearing it might be the police, the hospital, or worse. I urged Josh to pull himself together to stop drinking and partying, because I couldn't be the sole anchor of the family. I think he made efforts, but he struggled to provide real support eventually. One day, Dad began reading books about overcoming heartbreak, grief, and such. Often, at night, he'd lock himself in his room, and Rachel and I could hear the keys clicking on his computer keyboard. He poured his thoughts and feelings onto the screen, and I believe it helped him tremendously. Oh, and mom, remember how overweight dad was? Well, he started rising early to run, even dusting off the treadmill and weights, 
using them regularly. It seemed like he was pushing himself to embrace life again, which was uplifting to see. Stacy paused and thought for a moment, then said, I'm guessing you probably don't want to know all this stuff about Dad, but it's really important in the grand scheme of what I'm trying to explain to you about our lives, so I'm sorry if this isn't what you want to hear, but by the way, Dad looks pretty hot now. Even over the phone, it was clear that Stacy was smiling. No, no, it's okay, honey. I really needed to hear about this, but thank you for taking care of me and telling me about how everything happened for you. I really want to know how things are going with you, Rachel and Josh. Well, with Rachel, it's simple. After what happened, she seemed to shut down, retreat into herself, and remained in this sort of detached state for quite a long time. Now she's almost back to her old self, and you won't believe how well she's doing. A lot of it has to do with Janice. She and Rachel really became friends. Linda looked at the photo on her phone again and zoomed in, this time paying special attention to the woman who was helping Rachel get dressed. Okay, so who is this Janice you're talking about? Oh, sorry, Mom. Janice is Dad's girlfriend. Isn't she gorgeous? And she's so sweet. She is a former swimsuit model, but Janice is still involved in modeling. She really helped Rachel come out of her shell and now supports her desire to start a career in the modeling world. Stacy perked up, nearly jumping out of her bed when she remembered something about, by the way, Mom, you should definitely pick up a copy of last month's Teen Fashion World magazine. Rach is on the COVID, and she looks absolutely stunning. Recently, she has really become a very popular model. What? How? When did all this happen? First, your father hooked up with a girl half his age, and now she's selling your little sister to some dirty photographers. If only I knew what she was doing with the cheesecake photo one. Then I... I will bring charges against both your father and this Janet, or whatever her name is. The enraged Linda almost choked from the indignation that gripped her. Stacy held off on responding immediately to help calm the situation, then spoke softly to emphasize her point. Mom, Dad and Janice are extremely careful. They handle all of Rachel's and my modeling work with great caution. One of them is always present at our shoots, and they make sure the photographer signs a strict contract with Dad. According to the terms, not a single photo can be taken without Dad's permission. Do you truly believe Dad would approve anything remotely suggestive? He won't even let Rachel wear a swimsuit. And about Dad's girlfriend, as I mentioned, her name is Janice. She's 34, which means there's an 11-year age gap between her and Dad. It's actually much less of a difference compared to you and Frankie. How old is he, 100? Anyway, I'm not sure if they'll ever get married, but from what I see, they're very compatible. Janice has been a great support to him, and Dad seems genuinely happy. I've never seen him this content. That's the situation, Mom. I'm being honest about what I observe and feel. Frank is only 66, not as old as you seem to think, Stacy interjected, her displeasure evident. I'm just unsure if modeling is the right path for Rachel. I believe she'd benefit more from pursuing something more meaningful. Stacy bit her tongue to prevent herself from losing her temper and blurting out something regrettable. She turned away from her cell phone and took a deep breath, trying to regain her composure. Afterward, she returned the cell phone to her ear and continued speaking, disregarding the interruption. Rachel's modeling career has really helped her, Mom. She's much less shy now and exudes confidence and composure that she didn't have before. She's finally discovered her true self, her capabilities, and what she's truly passionate about. Sometimes she even takes charge in the studio or suggests creative-themed poses for her shoots. Mom, let's be real. Rachel was never a standout student and always saw herself as a failure, thinking her future held nothing good. But now she's poised to become a top-tier fashion model before finishing high school, with a bank account even you'd be proud of. And yes, Mom, I said that. I also model, but it's not my passion. Rachel and I do fashion shows together, but I mainly serve as support, complimenting Rachel's looks or showcasing different outfits. The best part? Rachel and I have grown close, helping each other out and collaborating. Plus, I'm making good money enough to save for college. Don't worry, I still enjoy school and maintain good grades. I'm even taking extra classes to graduate early for college. I still have an A average, but I'm a bit concerned about chemistry this year. It's a tough class, but I need to ace it for veterinary school. Stacy remembered something else and brightened up again, even giggling. Oh, Mom, you won't believe this. Rach and I get to keep some of the outfits from our shows and shoots, so now I have a really cool wardrobe. Can you imagine? I'm one of the most stylish girls in class now, not some geek. Many of the girls who used to think they were too cool are asking me for fashion tips, and some even want my autograph. Isn't it funny, albeit a bit nauseating? So mom, I'm almost popular. 
And the best part? Guys are starting to notice me, Stacy giggled. All this news greatly disturbed Linda, who had always struggled to achieve some level of recognition in society. She herself didn't know exactly what, but some kind of recognition. She left her family to pursue personal recognition, but it seemed her family members achieved success without her. What further aggravated the situation for Linda? They achieved such stunning success, seemingly effortlessly. Linda sighed heavily. Baby, I'm glad everything's going well with you and your sister. By the way, though I'm hesitant to ask, how's Josh? Is he okay? Stacy took a deep breath and glanced at the clock. Knowing Josh and Fauna would arrive soon, she didn't want to rush discussing Josh's situation, fearing she wouldn't have enough time. But feeling confident she could share Josh's update with her mother, Stacy continued. Well, Mom, surprisingly, Josh has turned things around. You know, he was quite wild even before you left. And after that, he continued drinking and partying even more with his friends. For a while, he completely lost control. Eventually, Dad got really angry and demanded he quit partying and either get a job or go back to school. Well, he told Dad off. So eventually, Dad kicked him out, telling him not to return until he found a job. Dad even had to call the cops a couple of times to get him out. Mother couldn't believe her ears. What? Your idiot father threw my son out? How dare he? I'll have Frank contact a lawyer and sue that scoundrel, Linda raged, clutching the phone and seething with anger. Well, good luck with that, Mom, Stacy said with a hint of irony. She knew her mother always favored Josh, letting him get away with anything, and Stacy knew Linda supported his antics by giving him money whenever he asked. In fact, she thought Josh was very lucky he never got into serious trouble. All this occurred a year and a half ago, Mom, and since then, Josh and Dad have reconciled. Josh relied on his friends for a while, but... Even they grew weary of supporting his laziness and kicked him out. He spent some time living on the streets, but eventually realized he didn't like that lifestyle, especially seeing us doing well. So one day, Josh apologized to Dad and expressed his desire to come home. Dad maintained his get-a-job-first stance, so Josh found work on a roofing crew. After that, he returned home, but Dad insisted he contribute to living expenses to teach him responsibility. Stacy chuckled. It was amusing hearing him complain about his tough job and expenses, but Dad always said that's how the real world operates and Josh needed to adapt. This continued until Fona entered the scene. Don't tell me Dad has a new girlfriend? Linda was indignant. Who's Fona? Stacy laughed. No, Mom. Fona is Dad's personal assistant. She's sharp-tongued and won't tolerate objections. Dad calls her his cool boss. Despite being only 22, she's competent and reliable. They met at a conference in Minneapolis. Fona approached him, shook his hand, and advised him to hire her for organizing trips, booking tickets, and managing expenses if he wanted real success. Impressed by her no-nonsense attitude, Dad hired Fona on the spot. Now she lives with us, and Dad jokes about having his own harem. It's hilarious, Stacy laughed. Fona has been crucial in Dad's career development. She's like my big sister, and we all adore her. Oh, Mom, Fona's a real stunner from Norway. She's five feet seven, with a trendy haircut, short blonde hair, and piercing light blue eyes. Poor Josh fell for her immediately, but Fona made it clear she wouldn't date someone without direction. Suddenly, Josh had newfound motivation. Stacy's tone turned serious as she shared the latest about her brother. And now, the big news. Mom, brace yourself. Four months ago, Josh enlisted in the Air Force and will soon head to language school in Monterey, California. Um, well, I think so. What language school? Russian. Linda gasped in shock. It was already beyond her comprehension. Chuckling quietly at her mother's reaction, Stacy remarked, Isn't it wild? Josh is currently stationed at Lackland Air Force Base, waiting for clearance. So, Dad asked him to come home and attend a party in his honor. Oh, and Fona's started treating him more gently, though she still won't admit she's with Josh. But we girls can tell she's fallen for him too. Fona's not seeing anyone else, and they spend hours on the phone whenever they can. Josh is so smitten. And get this. He plans to finish language school, go to college, earn a degree, and become an officer. Can you believe it, Mom? My always crazy brother, now a military officer. For those who knew him before, this sounds like utter nonsense. Love sure makes you do strange things, doesn't it, Mom? Stacy smiled, gesturing with her slender stiletto heel during their conversation about her brother's future plans. Suddenly, a baritone voice singing The Impossible Dream echoed in the background. Stacy laughed leapt off the bed and dashed into the hallway. Mom, you've got to hear this, she exclaimed into the phone, extending it towards the male voice. Simultaneously, female voices joined in with wolf howls and giggles. Then Rachel's laughter rang out. Dad's singing my favorite song, Janice chimed in. 
Don't quit your day job, Stacy teased. Dad, why don't you take that act on the road? The bus leaves in 10 minutes. Ed's voice, filled with mock indignation, broke through the laughter of the girls. Girls, you're eliminating me. No respect in my own family. I've had it. You're all off my Christmas list. Another burst of laughter followed by a chorus of, we love you, daddy, and reassurance from the man. They're back on the list, Stacy resumed her conversation. Returning to the phone, Stacy continued to giggle. Dad's a riot. He sings when he's happy or nervous, and we always egg him on. It's our little game with him. That's all Linda could manage, unable to say more. Subconsciously, she hoped her family was still suffering without her. But seeing they were thriving, she fell silent, feeling somewhat dazed. Stacy picked up the thread of conversation. Dad doesn't know he'll be the guest of honor tonight, but he's already a bit nervous. He and Jack McTaggart will play a couple of guitar duets with the band. You know how Dad is with his blues guitar, right? Since he and Jack became buddies, they've been jamming almost every week, strumming their guitars and sharing a few beers. Mom, you've got to hear their jokes about becoming rock stars soon. Ha, they're actually pretty good, though. But they jam just for fun. Tonight's their first public gig, and I bet it'll be a blast. Just picture Dad in a tuxedo rocking out on stage. Stacy grinned, imagining the scene. Upon hearing this surprising news, Linda was taken aback once more. Stacy, what are you saying? Your dad and John McTaggart are pals? Did I hear that right, John McTaggart? How? Why? Stacy smiled inwardly with a hint of mischief. She knew her mother held the McTaggart family in high esteem for their wealth and influence. She also recalled her mother's dream of meeting them in person. Now Stacy's dad and Jack McTaggart not only met, but practically became best buddies. Stacy also appreciated that the affluent and renowned head of the family insisted that members of the Mercer family address him simply as Jack, rather than the formal Mr. McTaggart. In person, Jack turned out to be quite pleasant and played a pivotal role in Ed's writing career's early stages. Yes, Mom, the same John, or Jack, as his close pals call him McTaggart, confirmed Stacy. It all began when Dad wrote a couple of articles about surviving and rebuilding life after a traumatic event, like losing everything when your cheating spouse leaves you for someone else. When a couple of small magazines bought his articles for publication, Dad was over the moon. Then I think Jack read Dad's articles, contacted him, and asked him to deliver a motivational speech at a McTaggart Corporation employee meeting. Dad nearly had a heart attack when he got Jack's offer. He prepared a talk based on his articles and delivered it at the meeting. The speech was a hit, and he received lots of warm feedback and gratitude, leading Jack to hire him again, this time to speak at the company's annual shareholders meeting. After that success, Dad started getting offers to speak at other meetings from various companies recommended by the board of directors. Everything fell into place from then on. Dad started writing more and more. His articles got published in bigger and more prestigious magazines, and he eventually decided to quit his job to focus full-time on writing and speaking engagements. Jack kept introducing Dad to important people. They started hanging out more and soon discovered they both loved playing blues and rock guitar. Their shared love for music brought Dad and him even closer, and they've been friends ever since. Stacy paused, allowing her mother to digest everything she'd just heard. It was quite a turn of events in their lives. Your father is a writer now, seriously, an author, a published writer. Your father, my ex-husband, is in magazines now. A bewildered Linda grappled with the paradoxical idea of her once underachieving ex-husband suddenly finding success. She secretly hoped it didn't pay too well. Meanwhile, sounds of activity drifted up from the first floor of the house. Guests had arrived. There was the muffled chatter of conversation and light laughter. A new, deep male voice stood out amidst the others, along with a much softer female voice. Stacy watched Janice leave Rachel's room and head downstairs, likely to greet the new arrivals as hostess. Suddenly, Stacy recalled a task on tonight's agenda that had slipped her mind. Mom, I'll have to leave soon. Jack and Mona McTaggart are already here, along with photographers for the newspaper's gossip column and the special photo album they produce and sell. Every year, there's an elaborate photo spread capturing the enchanted moments guests spend at their summer evening affair. Personally, the grandiosity makes me nauseous, but 
I believe the sales of this album raised significant funds for charity. So in the end, it serves a noble purpose. And we, the participants, bask in the warmth and goodwill there, almost feeling like celestial beings. She snorted. Stacy's voice carried a fair amount of sarcasm as she found the event excessively pretentious, catering unnecessarily to the vanity and narcissism of its attendees. Nevertheless, she couldn't help but feel a sense of pride that her father's accomplishments had suddenly elevated their family to a level of social status deserving of respect, especially from her estranged mother. Linda swiftly defended the high society tradition. Oh, Stacy, don't underestimate this. It's a great honor to be featured in this album and to know you were part of a historic event. You and Rachel should be thrilled to be the guests of honor at such a grand gathering. And since you'll be seated at the main table, your photos will grace nearly every page. I've secretly bought one of these albums almost every year, and this year I'll proudly show off a photo of Josh, you, and Rachel and say, look at these special people. They're my children. Just imagine. I'm actually quite envious of you. But at the same time, I'm immensely proud. I'll definitely be ordering several copies of this year's album as soon as they're available. Okay, Mom, Stacy replied absentmindedly, then recalled something else. Dad was supposed to attend a writing event in New York over Labor Day weekend, and Rachel, Janice, Fona, and I were planning to join him. Maybe then we could see you. I'd really like that. And I'm sure I could convince Rachel to come too, though she's still very angry with you for leaving. Maybe we'll bring Janice along so you two can meet. Um... You'd probably also like to see Dad, just in case, the daughter clarified. Oh, sweetheart, that's a fantastic idea, Linda agreed. Let's consider the options. I really want to see you and Rachel. As for your dad and his girlfriend, I'm not sure it's a good idea. There's been too much pain on both sides. However, I'd love for you to meet Frank. After all, he's your stepfather now. Upon hearing the last statement, Stacy made a gagging gesture with her tongue hanging out, pretending to be disgusted. Well, no, Mom, I still have nightmares about you and your Frankie snuggling up. Brrr. So the only way I'd meet him and you is if Dad and Janice are there, too. I think that's only fair. Linda wasn't pleased with her daughter's reaction, but tried to conceal her emotions to keep the conversation going. Okay, let's see how things unfold, Stacy. But let's not lose sight of our shared goal, to finally reunite. I can't wait to see and hug you and Rachel again. So, let's focus on that, honey. By the way... Coincidentally, the New York Literary Guild is hosting a Meet the Books Day on Labor Day weekend, and Frank is using his influence to secure tickets for us to attend. I'll push him to get tickets for all of us, the mother assured. Enthralled by the upcoming prestigious event, Linda eagerly shared her plans with her daughter. This biennale is shaping up to be quite an esteemed affair. Can you imagine, Stacy? Many renowned writers will be there, some signing their books and engaging with readers and fans. Perhaps you'll even get a selfie with one of the famous authors. You should see how excited Frank is. Need I say more? Did you know David Volchez himself promised to attend and Frank is really keen to meet him? David is an up-and-coming writer, but Frank insists his debut book is sensational and absolutely brilliant. Yes, Mom, I've heard of David Volchez. Actually, I've met him several times. I agree his work is truly remarkable. I read his book some time ago and found it quite, well, thought-provoking. Have you read his book yourself? Stacy's jab caught Linda off guard, but she chose not to react. No, to be honest, I haven't read it. It's not really my type of reading. But Frank? Oh, he's a big fan. Stacy chuckled, almost about to comment on how the book lacked enough pictures for her mom's literary tastes. But she held back. Mom, do you have a hardcover or paperback copy of David's book handy? Linda glanced around and then went into Frank's office. Yes, we have the hardcover book right here on Frank's desk. Why do you ask, dear? Look at the back inside of the dust jacket and tell me what you see. Ah, uh, here's a photo of the author of the book. Oh dear, it's Ed. Oh my goodness. This is a photo of your father that I took about seven or eight years ago. Oh lord, how can this be? It can't be David Volchez. It's your father, not David Volchez. Please tell me if this is some sort of mistake. Stacy doubled over with laughter, trying not to choke as the irony of the situation sank in. There's no denying it, Mom. Yes, yes, and yes. David Volchez is actually Edward J. Mercer. When Dad decided to pursue writing, he wanted to keep his writing ambitions separate for various reasons. So, he created a pseudonym and published his first novel under the name David Volchez. It's quite amusing, Mom. Stacy barely managed to speak into the phone, wiping away tears of laughter. Just think! Your new husband's favorite author is your own ex-husband.
It's absolutely hilarious. I haven't laughed this hard in ages. They could make a movie about this. Unbelievable. Mom, this is just too funny. Linda just sat there looking devastated and finally said quietly, Crap. Stacy already had to go, so ending the conversation, she said, still chuckling, I have to go, Mom. I'll send you my email address and you can send me yours and we'll agree on our plans for Labor Day weekend. I'm so glad you called and I really want to see you again. I love you, Mom. Phew, this is still too funny. In some inexpressibly gloomy voice, Linda asked, Say hi to your brother and sister for me and give them my number so they can call me when they get a chance. I love you too. Stacy, the eldest daughter, turned off the phone and went downstairs, still giggling to herself at the unexpected consequences of the recent turn of events and preening in front of the large mirror, prepared to take photos for the social onlookers. Stacy knew that tonight she would have no problems with her dazzling smile, but only she would know the reason for her excellent mood. Linda continued to sit in deep thought for a long time, staring blankly at the book lying on the table in front of her, until she came to the clear realization that karma is truly a vengeful cow. She didn't have time to completely move away from the conversation with Stacy when Frank almost trotted into the room. Linda, you will never believe what happened. I just received a card from David Volchies. I wrote to him telling him how much I enjoyed his book and how much I was looking forward to seeing him in September. And so he answered me, and he wrote the message with his own hand. Can you imagine? Wait, I'll read it to you now. Dear Frank, you have no idea how glad I am that you read and liked my first novel. Although you may not know it, it was you who provided very, a very positive influence on my life and career. I don't know if I can ever thank you enough for this. So I look forward to thanking you in person. You have lifted a huge weight off my shoulders and provided a much-needed spark for my personal growth as a person and a writer. So I am deeply indebted to you. Best wishes, David Volchez. Frank, in his ecstatic joy, continued to babble excitedly about how he must have met David once because his photograph in the book looked a little familiar to him. But he couldn't remember where he had seen the now popular writer. Now her now husband couldn't wait to meet him in person, hoping to become a good friend to his new favorite author. All this time of intense joy and bustle around her, Linda continued to become more and more gloomy and depressed as Frank's words sunk deeper and deeper into her mind. Finally, in a creaky voice from the depths of her parched throat, she exhaustedly squeezed out, Shut up, Frank. Just shut up.